welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. New report confirms evidence of extrajudicial execution of Palestinian man by Israeli forces. Bus drivers in London go on strike to demand fair pay and compensation. Biden administration reopens detention facilities for unaccompanied migrant children. Guardian report reveals deaths of over 6,500 migrant workers in Qatar over a decade. El Salvador faces worsening institutional and economic challenges ahead of legislative elections. A report released on February 23rd has confirmed evidence that the killing of a 26-year-old Palestinian man by Israeli forces was an extrajudicial execution. London-based research group Forensic Architecture confirmed that Ahmed Arakat had not posed any threat to Israeli forces or property when he was killed in June 2020. Arakat was killed on June 23rd by Israeli soldiers at a checkpoint in Bethlehem in the occupied West Bank. He was going to pick up his family members from a beauty salon on the day of his sister's wedding. Video footage from the checkpoint used for the report showed Arakat's car veering into a booth and hitting a soldier. Forensic architecture has shown that Arakat did not accelerate his car to hit the booth and has disputed claims made by the Israeli military that the crash was intentional. After the crash, Arakat left his vehicle and moved away while raising his hands in the air. Israeli soldiers proceeded to shoot Arakat six times with three shots fired after he had already fallen to the ground. This directly contradicted the Israeli military's claims that Arakat had run towards the soldiers and also violated Israel's open fire regulations. Footage from the scene also shows that a Palestinian ambulance was not allowed to reach him. He was left lying on the ground for nearly two hours before an Israeli ambulance finally took him away. During this time, all of his clothes were removed and photographs of the scene were taken by Israeli personnel. Forensic architecture has termed this denial of immediate medical attention, killing by time. Israeli authorities have refused to release an autopsy report with details of his death. They have also refused to hand over his body to his family for a proper burial. Arakat is among 70 Palestinians whose bodies have been confiscated by Israeli authorities in violation of international humanitarian law. Forensic architecture has called this a practice of collective punishment. Around 2200 bus drivers from the Unite Union concluded the first round of their strike action on February 24th. Drivers employed by the French-owned RATP group went on strike on February 22nd to demand fair pay and compensation. The RATP has been accused of attempting to use the pandemic as a smokescreen to implement pay cuts. The attempted cuts will leave drivers with a pay decrease of up to £2,500 per year. Unite Regional Officer Michel Brepoy has stated that these permanent changes will lead to workers suffering a substantial financial loss. A dispute over zero contract hours has reportedly also not been resolved. Workers at the other two RATP subsidiaries also went on strike this week. Workers at Quality Line based in Surrey went on strike on February 22nd and 23rd. Drivers at London Sovereign, which operates in Northwest London, went on strike on February 22nd. They have reportedly also planned strikes on March 1st and March 3rd. Walkouts in other RATP subsidiaries will also be held next week. The Unite Union has stressed that the workers have been left with no choice but to resort to strikes as the RATP has refused to listen to reason and continue negotiations. As reported by the Surrey Comet, some workers were reportedly offered a raise of only 7 pence, which they rejected. The Biden administration has started reopening detention facilities for unaccompanied immigrant children. On 23rd February, it was reported that a Trump-era homestead temporary shelter for unaccompanied children is being reopened. The facility, which was run by a for-profit organization, was shut down in August 2019 following protests by rights groups joined by several members of the Democratic Party. The facility has reportedly been reopened after being renamed as the Biscayne Influx Care Facility in the state of Florida. Another Trump-era detention facility to hold around 700 immigrant children was also opened at Carrizo Springs in the state of Texas on February 22nd. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki has claimed that the reopening of these facilities are a temporary measure to comply with COVID-19 protocols. Activists have criticized the decision as the United States continues to detain unaccompanied children crossing international borders. President Joe Biden has promised to take steps to undo the anti-immigrant anti-immigrant policies of his predecessor Donald Trump. However, the reopening of detention facilities has been denounced as a continuation of Trump era policies. Over 6,500 South Asian migrant workers have died in Qatar since it won the right to host the FIFA World Cup in 2010. 
The figures were published by The Guardian on February 23rd after compiling government data from five South Asian countries. These include India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal and Sri Lanka. 5,927 workers from India, Bangladesh, Nepal and Sri Lanka died in Qatar between 2011 and 2020. 69% of these deaths were categorized as natural in official records. However, such rulings are often done without an autopsy or forensic investigations. Other causes of death listed in official data include blunt injuries sustained after falling from a height, asphyxia due to hanging and undetermined causes. The Guardian had previously also reported that severe heat in Qatar was a likely factor in a significant number of deaths. Qatar has undertaken large-scale infrastructure projects in preparation for the 2022 Football World Cup. According to local advocacy group Fair Square Projects, it is likely that many of the workers who have died in the country were employed in these projects. The Guardian reports that 37 deaths have been of workers directly linked to the construction of World Cup stadiums. 34 out of these have been classified as non-work related by the tournament's organizing committee. However, experts have contested this term as it includes deaths that have occurred at the work site. The Guardian's report has revealed discrepancies and lack of transparency in the recording of deaths of workers' deaths in Qatar. Several rights groups have also urged the Qatari government to amend laws to mandate forensic investigations in cases of sudden deaths. For our final story of the day, we go to El Salvador, which is set to hold its legislative elections on February 28th. The country is facing a health crisis and worsening economic conditions under the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. At the same time, the administration of President Nayib Bukele has been accused of pursuing an increasingly authoritarian political agenda. Here is Victor Suazo from the progressive Farabundo Martin National Liberation Front to talk more about the current scenario and the challenges facing the incoming legislative assembly. Así que hemos sido afectados eh, por la pandemia del COVID-19, hemos sido afectados por la crisis global, pero sobre todo por el mal manejo del gobierno. Pero hay otro elemento que, sin lugar a dudas, es un punto diferenciador en cuanto a El Salvador con el resto de, al menos, el continente americano. Y es que el actual gobierno que está siendo liderado por el señor Nayib Bukele, ha aprovechado esta crisis para aumentar sus políticas autoritarias que ya habían iniciado incluso antes de la pandemia, pero que producto de esta emergencia nacional se ha visto que han incrementado las violaciones a derechos humanos y el quebrantamiento al Estado de Derecho y desobediencia prácticamente incluso a la Constitución. Y hemos visto con preocupación que han duplicado el presupuesto en Fuerza Armada a pesar de que nuestra Constitución delimita muy bien las funciones de la Fuerza Armada y son para cuidar el territorio nacional y la soberanía nacional y está utilizando de manera política a esta Fuerza Armada y de igual manera a la Policía Nacional Civil y las ha puesto al servicio de su partido político Nuevas Ideas y han dejado de estar al servicio de la población. El principal reto es cuidar la democracia, luchar contra el autoritarismo y defender pues, las instituciones que se han creado y que ha implicado además que El Salvador tenga una grave crisis en cuanto a las finanzas públicas ya que el, el gobierno ha estado incumpliendo una ley de responsabilidad fiscal y hemos tenido un alto endeudamiento público, cero transparencia, eh, y esto ha implicado que ya organismos como el Fondo Monetario Internacional esté eh, hablando, y, y hay eh, algunos acuerdos, que el gobierno pretende aplicar después de las elecciones que tenemos este 28 de febrero, Acuerdos que implican un ajuste fiscal de tres puntos porcentuales del PIB y se prevén despidos masivos, recorte al gasto social y aumento de impuestos indirectos, como es el caso del IVA, que viene a afectar a los más pobres. Así que eh, tenemos que estar, eh, como nueva legislatura, muy pendientes de ese tipo de situaciones. And that is all the time we have for this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more such stories and videos, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.